Hi, and welcome back. I appreciate you coming by for another visit here into the living room. As you can see, the tree is gone. We've got our space back. I've got plenty of room now to move around. I'm so excited. And I'm trying not to buy any more plants because I see all this space because I do have other plants that need to be moved back out. But today's video is about Phalaenopsis. What I wish I would have known before I started buying a bunch of Phalaenopsis. Um, as most of us start off, we see these beautiful, pretty little blooms. And we're like, oh, I gotta have that, I gotta have that. We don't take into consideration the health of the plant, um, what kind of lighting they need, how we're gonna water it, where we're gonna put it. Um, we just see a pretty bloom and we have to have it. Or in my case, I'm also a sucker for big juicy leaves. Look at those leaves on there. This, this is what drew me to her, these blooms. But then when I saw the leaves, I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Of course, now that I've been collecting them for a while, I kind of know what to look for. I still make those mistakes. I'm going to kind of run through kind of what I do when I look at orchids in the shop. The ones that we can pick up and move around ourselves. Obviously, if we buy them online, you can't really maneuver it and pick it up and, and see what you're going to get. You just kind of get what the nursery is going to give you. Also, if you want to uh, see a video, because I was thinking of going out, obviously when it warms up a little bit more, and going out and kind of showing you my process on how I look at the plants, how I determine whether I'm going to bring it home, um, outside of pretty blooms must have, um, as Roger would say. I love that saying because it's so, so true. First thing I wish I would have known is that when you're purchasing a Phalaenopsis, try not to get one that is almost completely bloomed out like this big juicy gorgeous one here but try to find you one that has some blooms that are open but has plenty of buds left to open as well because you'll enjoy it longer uh, the more blooms that are open the longer obviously they've been in bloom and as most of us know phalaenopsis blooms last anywhere from three to six months depending on if it extends its spike temperature lighting all of that so try to find one that has more buds than blooms so you can enjoy it a little bit longer also very important is pick it up if you can out of the pot and look inside the pot now the media in this pot here it is kind of going over it's not too too bad it is kind of going over a little bit but look at the roots in there very very healthy root system in there so this would be a good candidate to purchase as <clears throat> excuse me as a first timer however this one here which is in the moss and it's a little harder to see in the moss but she does have let's see if i can find it she does have some roots in there but if you look at them they look kind of tired they're not nice and green and healthy they're they're kind of on the darker side and the moss itself you can kind of see it's kind of brownish and kind of going over um, so i will be repotting her into a different media the media of my choice it might just be the moss but i like the new zealand moss or I may put her in a moss bark mix, or I may just put her in bark. That will depend on where she's going to be. If she's going to be in an area that dries out a little bit quicker in my home, then I will put her in the moss because I know that moss will dry out. Um, also, if you notice, when you buy these lovelies, they don't have holes in the pots. Now that's not always a, a, a must, but having, especially when you're new, having those holes in the pot will help dry out that media quicker to help you kind of adjust this orchid into your home. They are known to be low light orchids, um, or low light plants. However, you can't just stick it in a closet and call it a day. ZZ plants? I think you can. I've got a ZZ plant in the darkest space of my home. I haven't watered it in, I think, two months and it's still growing, but that's, just, that, that's neither here nor there. If you are looking at pretty blooms must have, like I did with my Andrea here, I saw she had a double spike, beautifully full blooms, just cascading, just gorgeous, and I didn't pay attention. One of them 
was a terminal spike. Do you see that spike right there? It grew out of the center of the plant. So no leaves, nothing else can grow from there. And luckily she did develop this cakey, which is now spiked and flowering. A lot of times though, you can wait years, years uh, before it grows a cakey. You can leave the flower spike on and had I paid attention and realized that was a terminal spike before I cut it, you can leave the flower spike on and it can create a cakey from off of the nodes. However, again, as a beginner, that's not really something you want. You, you know, you want a plant that's going to thrive for you, give you some confidence. Because when you get pretty blooms must have, sometimes you end up with this. This used to, let's see if I can get you down, look like that one right there with the big juicy leaves right here. She used to be all nice and pretty as well. I got her back in July. I repotted her in September and this is what we have. So I think another thing I might be doing in 2022 is just letting go. Um, I want to save them all as we all do, but I think I may just have to let some things go. She is part of an experiment right now with the calcium, so I'm not going to toss her quite yet but she's getting close. Um, I'm thinking I may just need to clear out those that aren't doing anything, not giving me any joy, just giving me stress, and get rid of them. Another thing is Pretty Blooms must have. This is another one, okay? Again, I wasn't paying attention, and she started going downhill. Try to find a healthy plant because I left her in her nursery pot too long. The outer roots looked really good, like the one we just saw. However, once I took her out of the pot, she had three roots that looked good. She is slowly recovering. Um, she's growing roots. Um, she has some roots in the pot as well, as we can see right there. But you don't want to spend the beginning of your orchid journey rescuing orchids. Another thing that I would look for as well is, let's look at this one here, is look at your leaves. How your leaves are growing, okay? If they are generally pretty uniform, this plant has not been under a lot of stress because the plant is growing pretty evenly. If you have one, let's see if I can, I don't have an example. Oh, I do, hold on, I did pull one. We'll just use this one again. But if you look at the two outer leaves, they're, they're good. But then this leaf right here, do you see how crinkled and curly and, and shorter it is? And then the next leaf that she attempted was this one, which was even smaller. Now she's attempting this one, which is growing. So if you look at your plant and you see a lot of little leaves, long leaves, little leaves, long leaves, and there aren't spikes in between because a lot of times Phalaenopsis, when they spike, they stop growing their leaf and focus on the spike. Once spike, uh, spike gets cut off, it starts a new leaf. It generally, it's not 100%, but generally it doesn't continue on that leaf. So if you're looking at your orchid and you see a lot of big leaves, little leaves, big leaves, medium leaves, just not a lot of uniformity, put the plant down. Even if she has beautiful blooms, put the plant down, move on to the next one. That plant has been under a lot of stress. You don't want to bring a plant into your home that's already been under stress because you're going to put it under some stress by changing the environment, the climate, the culture, and all that good jazzy stuff. Something else I wish I would have known or maybe listened to, maybe I knew it and just didn't pay attention, is let your plants acclimate to your home if you can before you repot them into what you want them in. Um, for instance, this one here is still in her original nursery pot. Uh, I just got this one. This one is still in her original nursery pot. However, I do have this one here. Let's see if I can just pull her out real quick that I've had since November okay this is the one that had the big white flowers on it that's growing her spike but she's still in her nursery pot now her roots are still doing rather well and I am waiting for new roots to start growing she's getting a little wobbly but that's just because the media is really loose in there so what I might do is just put like a little rock or something to kind of anchor her, but leave them in your nursery pot until they kind of acclimate a little bit into the home. And then 
put them where you want them. The only time you would want to repot, because I was the world's worst of, as soon as I got an orchid home, within 24 hours, it was unpotted, cleaned up, all the roots I could see that looked bad were cut off, and I did a lot of damage, okay? Let's just say that. But I am learning to leave them in their nursery pot, let them kind of acclimate to my home, and find that right time. So kind of, if you can, wait for new roots to start so that if the roots that it does have decide that they don't like the, the stress and they desiccate on you or you end up overwatering it because now it's a new media so you feel like you need to give it more water, whatever the reason, those new roots will acclimate to your new environment. However, if you have one, say for instance, this one here, this nursery pot right here, this little cheap nursery pot was already tearing up or you just, there's a funk coming out of it, then obviously you wanna get your plant out of that. And that's kind of what happened with these two, even though these two are recent, recent acquisitions. I did have to take them both out of the nursery pot and put them in to uh, their, not forever home, but their home for hopefully the next um, couple of years because the one, the pot was all tore up and already, she was already busting out of it with the roots. And then the other one, the moss just, ugh, oh my gosh, it was, it, it stank. It, it, it just stank. And it was one of those definitely pretty blooms must have. I will do what I need to do to clean her up. Um, lighting, indirect bright light. That's like saying, keep it wet, but not soggy. It's kind of a what does that mean? So bright indirect light, you don't want to give them direct sunlight, but they can grow under grow lights. They can grow in front of windows. If you're going to have it growing in front of, especially a southern facing window, you would want to put like a sheer curtain or something to kind of block the strength of the sun. Um, mine have an east facing window, so I don't really have to worry about that too much, but you don't want to burn the leaves. I don't have any that have sun damage on them, but it would look similar, something like this. Like if you start seeing kind of spotting like that, dry spotting on there, it would be something similar like that. This is just mechanical damage, but it would, it would definitely look like this, but it would look like a sunspot if, um, for those of you who do grow other house plants would know what a sunspot looks like. And watering, okay. So I used to, I used to water from the top, again, um, with a regular house plant, you know, if you get water in the, the leaf joint or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, it matters with these guys because you don't want to get water into this crown area, this area right in here, because what happens is that water travels down, let me, down the, this is the stem, down the monopodial stem here, and then it'll just rot it from the inside out. Also, you want to try to avoid water in the leaf joints for that same reason. So if you're going to water from the top, take your watering can, and just water on the edges. And what I do is I'll take and I water, but I run, I kind of tilt it so that it runs through. I'll post the videos I did of when I was watering, how I showed watering my Phalaenopsis. And other than that, um, there's some other things I wish I would have known like fertilizing and all that, but that, that is important. But initially when you first get your orchids home and you're first starting your collection, Fertilizing is not something I would really concentrate on. I would concentrate on letting them dry out and, you know, how to water them, getting them in the right light for your home, kind of learn their growth pattern, and then eventually start fertilizing. I don't fertilize my new orchids for at least six to eight weeks once I bring them into my home. Um, that's just a personal choice. I know some people just put their orchids into their regular routine. I wait just to let them get acclimated and then I will slowly start uh, adding fertilizer as I go along. Up until then, I just give them plain water. Um, currently, I am using the zero water filter, which is giving me zero TDS in the water, so they're not getting anything. Uh, the pH is around five and a half to six and a half. Um, depending on the age of the filter, but right now we are at zero TDS. And all of these four here are new acquisitions. The others that I've had for a, a little bit, like when I told you it takes a while for the cakeys to develop, 
Um, I bought this in December of 2020 and it did not start producing a cakey and this until I think September of 2021. So almost a year. So you have to have a little bit of patience, but overall, um, I'm pretty pleased with my phalaenopsis. And if you have some tips and tricks on when you first bring a fowl home, let us know in the comments below. Also, again, if you want to go with me to buy a phalaenopsis, uh, kind of see my work through, what I, what I look at, what my thought process is, let me know that as well. And once it gets warmer here, probably in March, April time frame, we'll go on a shopping trip. May be able to do it even sooner because as sporadic as the temperatures have been here, we may get lucky and get a, a 50, 60 degree day where I'll feel comfortable bringing orchids in. Oh, that's another thing. When you're buying your orchids, not just Phalaenopsis, but just orchids in general, but since Phalaenopsis are the ones that are more readily available everywhere, if the temperature is really cold outside, cover your lady with a bag to protect the buds and the blooms because that sudden drop in temperature, you can blast your blooms and blast your buds. So all that hard work that you went through picking out the perfect orchid, you can ruin that just by a simple drop in temperature of that, that severity. And we'll see you on the next one.